It's pretty hard to walk on a tightrope, but I thought I'd have a go. I set up a bar which is a steel scaffold pole and tried my best to walk along it. Sometimes I could almost make it to the end, but most of the time I did far worse than that. It's a bit easier if you crouch right down and use your arms to help you balance, but standing up tall makes it even harder. Standing still on the spot for any length of time is practically impossible. But could I make a device that would help me balance? I've built a couple of projects that used reaction wheels to make a device balance on the spot. This is a wheel which rotates and dynamically accelerates in either direction based on the angle of the device. Force equals mass times acceleration, so we only get a reaction force when the wheel is accelerating or changing direction. I used an inertial measurement unit to read the angle and a PID controller to tune the response, and you can check out my previous videos for more in-depth details. Using the PID controller allows us to tune how much the wheel accelerates and how fast it goes, and also how fast it stops when the device is upright. I also built a one wheel balancing robot which uses the reaction wheel to balance sideways and then balances back to front like a traditional two wheel balancing robot or a Segway. Note that this is different to a control moment gyroscope which uses a constantly spinning mass moved in a control axis to exert a perpendicular force in another axis. I've also built various balancing robots using gyroscopes including another one wheel device, and you can check all these out in my balancing robots playlist on YouTube. But how big would a reaction wheel need to be to help me balance so I can walk all the way down the beam? So that leaves us with a funny looking bracket with lots of bells and whistles and knobs attached, but we also need some CNC parts and some 3D printed parts. Just a quick ad from my 3D printing sponsor, thanks to Lulzbot for supporting my channel with 3D printers. And thanks to 3D Fuel for the filament for this project and lots of other projects, so check out my channel for more 3D printing projects and check out 3dfuel.com. So that leaves us with a steel frame with some 3D printed brackets that attaches neatly onto a frame rucksack which I'm going to wear on my back. So we've also cut some wheels which are going to make the main reaction wheel and that's mounted on bearings on some bright steel bar welded to the frame and I've got a 3D printed HTT profile pulley on there so that we can move that reaction wheel and hopefully it will help me balance. So far it's pretty comfortable to wear and it's attached to me with both the waist strap and the shoulder straps and the link in between the shoulder straps. To control the whole thing I've got a Teensy LC which is more than powerful enough and an MPU 6050 inertial measurement unit I'm going to read the angle with. 
I've made this trigger attached to a slide pot so I can actually ramp up and down the output and that means when I turn it on I don't get a sudden jolt that you would have seen on my balancing bike project. So that's just a slide pot and a spring underneath. So now when I turn it up and down and we move the inertial measurement unit we can see that motor spinning faster or slower depending on how much I pull the trigger. And that means I can ramp up and down smoothly and if I let go then it should just stop. The gearbox to drive this is pretty similar to the last two projects I did which were both vehicles. So we've got a brushless motor with a T5 pulley on mounted on an aluminium plate and again it's one of the AeroDrive 6374 149kV motors that are about 1500 watts. This time though I'm using a 2 to 1 reduction because we still need quite a lot of velocity and I think that motor will be more than powerful enough. So as before that's mounted between the aluminium chassis where the motor is and a 3D print which holds the other end of its axle. And I've got some 3D printed spacer blocks there so that we can hold that nice and tight and those are bolted up. And that holds the pulley nice and tight so we've got our 2 to 1 reduction running between the belt on the motor, small to big and then small to big back onto the main wheel. So now we can spin our reaction wheel. And that seems to run okay, so you can see there's the intermediate stage there with both of those pulleys and both of those belts turning and everything runs pretty smoothly. So now we can control it with a hand controller by ramping up and down or turning it on and off and I've already written some code with a rudimentary PID config so that that reaction wheel catches up as we tilt either side. But before we carry on with that it's time for a quick ad from the video's sponsor which is Fanhome. Fanhome is a new brand dedicated to developing unique collections and build-up models from the best-loved brands like Marvel and Star Wars, as well as providing fully illustrated magazines with inspiring content in every product. All products are original in-house designs paired with inspiring content, including behind-the-scenes material, little-known information and rare images. Every month receive exclusive products and magazines with inspiring content. In your first package you'll receive either two figures and two magazines or two assembly stages with parts and two magazines. From the second package onward you'll receive three to four figures or assembly stages with their corresponding parts and magazines. Enjoy the amazing journey into the universe you love. I've got some ships from the Complete Galactic Fleet Collection from Star Wars. Each model is die cast and has been hand painted to provide unprecedented realism and accuracy in every detail, and it comes with a fully illustrated magazine. The collection has been reviewed and approved by Disney and Lucasfilm Limited. Collect a different vehicle and starship with every shipment the Millennium Falcon, Atat, the Death Star, and many, many more. And to celebrate the Fan Home launch, early bird subscribers will also receive an exclusive Starkiller base model. Just go to the link in the description to this video and use the promo code PROMOJBRUTON. I've got my belt nicely tensioned and I've done that by means of two bolts which are bolted into that T piece you can see just above the gearbox and those are pushing the gearbox down so our main belt is tensioned against the main wheel. We need to put some mass on our wheel though and what I've got in the workshop is a bunch of steel so I'm going to cut up some box section steel and attach that to the wheel all the way around onto the pre-drilled holes that I've already left. And yes, we had to make this piece lots of times so that we've got lots of them to attach all around the wheel. I drilled and tapped those with an M4 tap and that means that we can basically go and bolt them onto the wheel and I already left holes that are pre-drilled all the way around. So I'm just using some M4 socket caps and then we can go and screw those on and that will hopefully add some mass. I'm not sure if it's going to be enough mass yet though because box section steel's hollow and it's actually pretty light. But it looks quite compact so far. So it's time for the first test to see if it looks like it's going to tip me upright. So you can see the wheel spinning back in the other direction as I lean over. And I can feel a little jolt but it doesn't feel like it's anything like enough to tip me back over as I'm going to fall over. So I added some steel bar all the way around to fill in the gaps and give me a bit more mass. So that's just solid bar instead of box section. And now I can still feel a bit more of a jolt and it feels like it's nudging me back again, but that's still not really enough. So I'm going to add some more steel bar to that by welding some steel bar to those bits of steel bar. And that means that I've got slightly longer pieces 
which fit all the way around now, so we have a bigger diameter, which should give us more reaction. Plus, we've got more mass, which should give us a bigger reaction. So, let's see how that goes. So, I'm balancing on one foot here to see if it feels like it's going to work when I balance on the bar. And it feels much, much better. It's like a person either side sort of pushing me back. So, I can really feel a jolt there. Although, my body's quite squishy, and you tend to absorb the load of something pushing you rather than being completely rigid, like the rigid reaction wheel that was just to stick to the ground. So it's going to be quite an interesting technique, I think, to try and balance with this without absorbing the load. But yeah, I decided to add some more steel to that. I didn't want to make the wheel any bigger, and there isn't any more clearance, so I've just added another piece, which makes up that length, so we've got two pieces right on the circumference of it. So those are all added now, so we've got pretty much the most mass without changing all the box section, that I'm comfortable with adding. It's getting pretty heavy now though, so to actually get this on I need to put it on the bench and then take the load. Um, but let's give that a spin and see what happens. So it really is like someone either side nudging me back now. And you can see that wheel's spinning up far less because it's pushing me back more and that means that the motor doesn't reach its maximum velocity. So I'm pretty happy of how this feels. I don't really want to carry any more on my back and without increasing the diameter of the whole thing, I think that's pretty much as good as it's going to get. But yeah, it weighs probably more than 30 kilograms now, so I'm not really adding any more mass just because I don't want to carry it. But can I balance on the bar? Well, that's better than I could do without it. Let's try and stand on the spot. I'm just going to get myself at the zero point on the ceiling there and then try and stand still. So it feels like it's working and I could stand still for a lot longer than I could before, but ultimately I can't stand still for a very long time. And yeah, walking's not too bad, it's definitely helping me, but it's still not that easy to walk all the way along without falling off about halfway through. So just retuning the PID controller to give it more proportional gain so that it's more aggressive and pushes me back more. Well, I'm able to stand still for a lot longer, completely upright, which I just couldn't do before. Now, there isn't quite enough reaction, because there isn't enough mass and the diameter isn't big enough, so eventually I managed to push through the reaction force, essentially, and it doesn't hold me anymore. But it's much better than it was without it. Walking along the bar, though, isn't too bad. It took me a couple of goes, but basically I've learnt a technique which is pushing against the reaction on each side in sync with my steps. As I said, there isn't quite enough reaction to hold me totally upright, but if I imagine there's people pushing me either side, and I push off one, and then on the other, and then on the other, on each side, in turn, then basically I can walk across. And I feel like it's not too unnatural. It feels a bit like I'm walking like a robot, like Honda's Asimo or something like that, but basically, after a few goes of practicing with this, pushing either side against the imaginary virtual people that are pushing me back, I can actually walk pretty well. I'm pretty sure I could walk much further if the bar was longer, and it'd probably work for quite some distance. That is, of course, as long as I actually keep my feet on the bar. I'm actually not too unhappy with that. It does fundamentally work, and I can walk on the beam better than I could without it. It's actually quite hard carrying 30 kilograms on your back and stepping up onto the beam as it is, so probably what I need is a much bigger reaction wheel with less mass on it to give a bigger reaction, although actually there's a practical limit, of course, to how big that can get. I'm going to publish all the Canon code, though, if you want to have a look, although I don't recommend you try building this. So if you want to support me through Patreon or YouTube channel membership, then you can, and those links are in the description below to this video. Our patrons and YouTube channel members can get access to all the videos up to a week early. All right, that's all for now.